Hey guys, how are you doing? It's been probably a good half year ago, like six months ago or so, when I purchased this S4 with the locked engine, because I guess it sucked some water and damaged one of the cylinders. And since then, uh, I got the engine out. If you remember, I have the video pulling the engine out from this car along with the transmission and later on I purchased 2013 S4 as the donor to you know use the engine from this one is 2011 and uh, long story short for some reason I decided that I would like to fix 2013 as well uh, because it had a good engine but it had uh, it has a, a damage on the right hand side along with the hood so uh, yeah that's the current condition of this 2013 S4 and so about six months months passed and there is nothing I've done except, you know, when we pull this engine from that car and this engine is sitting here like again, probably six months or so. And I said enough is enough and I would probably would like to revert to plan A when we will pull the engine from this 2013 S4 and attempt to install it there. Uh, it's not a direct swap, unfortunately, because the engine is 98% same and like 2% different. Uh, in addition, like the not related to the engine, this car is equipped with the electrical power steering. And this one got hydraulic power steering. So uh, I will be using the wiring harness from 2011 engine. Uh, you know, most guys are saying online that it's fairly, fairly direct swap, with the exception of couple, you know, sensors or or whatnot. And we'll we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, right now, I will start to you know preparing this 2013 for you know pulling the engine uh, for example this CLK 500 uh, if you remember it took me an hour and a half to pull the engine you know from you know point A when nothing was touched to point B when the engine was out of the car one hour and 30 minutes it included like the you know the exhaust uh, it included I mean everything so yeah uh, you, you can uh, <laughs> you can look one of the videos which I post recently and see the the whole process from from A to Z but this one it took me probably three days to pull the engine from 2011 S4 and it's uh, it's much more complicated comparing to this Mercedes so hopefully it's gonna go smooth and uh, like right out of the bat this exhaust is, or uh, cutback exhaust is not factory you can see the previous owner you know cut the pipes and weld you know the aftermarket exhaust whatever it is so uh, yeah yeah so let's let's probably start and see how it goes and I think the first order of operations, let's see if the back part of the exhaust, where the muffler is, is willing to cooperate. Okay, not bad. I'm sure it's probably partially welded to this outer pipe. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe yes.
Everything is a hammer, right? Okay, this one is not attached, so probably this one just needs some more precision. Good. All right, let's continue. Okay, let's see if it's the only bolt holding the muffler or not. Actually, it's not. Not a bolt. 13 millimeters. Let's see if we are able to lower the whole thing. How will it work with us? Right, we're getting somewhere. Let's repeat the same thing from the other side. The easy portion <laughs> of the exhaust is done. The hard portion are those bolts, three bolts holding the each pipe in place. Hopefully you can see them right there and right there. I'm gonna use some, you know, penetrating oil and I'm gonna have a break and drink some tea while the oil is doing its job. Let's check if I'll be able to access some of those bolts from here on the bottom and looks like I should be able to. It's a 12 millimeter nut. I'm not sure how to. Probably I won't be able to give you guys a good view and at the same time to work there because it's quite a one of the nuts almost out the second nut I probably won't be able to get the direct access to let me try and use a swivel hold on guys okay two accessible nuts 
from the bottom are undone. Okay, two nuts. Two nuts already undone from this side as well. And now I have left one nut on each side which is which are not accessible from the bottom if I'm not mistaken last time I used super long extensions and did it from the top so I'm gonna need to lower the car down and we'll see if the memory serves me right okay the car been uh, lowered so this is the <laughs> super long extension i guess it's about 48 inches but it goes straight to the upper nut on the driver's side and oh see Ugh! wow it sits definitely tighter than the lower ones Oh, okay. So the driver's side is easy because there is like a straight shot to this upper nut. However, the passenger side, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do the same trick. Get okay, the nut is somewhere there so i i don't think I'll, I'll be able to do the same trick because the position of the header is slightly different on the passenger side and i can just partially see the nut and uh, i'll try to use a shorter socket maybe with the swivel and see if i'll be able to uh, grab the nut on the on the dry I mean on the passenger side but I uh, don't think that I'll be able to stay tuned guys okay there is no way to get it from the top to the passenger side upper nut and I'm slowly starting to remember like remember Schwarzenegger in total recall what I did last time to get there I used this uh, wrench with a swivel head and i was able to put it on the nut on the top and then and then i used i guess like a long extension and ha hammered on the pivot point of this wrench let's see if it's gonna if this trick gonna work this time again or not I think it's working actually. And the funny thing, the gravity returns the range to the bottom again. Yeah, the only thing I'm wondering how I'll be able to tighten this nut back when the time comes. Because obviously I cannot punch from the other side. <laughs> Yeah. 
do it with hand. No, still pretty tight. Come on, go back. Getting somewhere. I mean, no joke, how to put it back in place? Oh! I guess this is the indication this job completed now I'm simply gonna undo this cross member and uh, this nut and that's it the exhaust is going down oops wrong side a rather direction be good enough for support Something is holding us, but I do not see. Ah, there is one more. Uh, on the other side. Do -do 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 -do. Huh. one more huh. okay. now we can carefully lower the whole thing
think I can grab it from from here. Guys. Moderately heavy, I would say. Okay, let's undo the you know cross member or whatever that thing is. It looks like it's aftermarket because it's significantly different than my 2011 head. Two. I slightly soak those bolts with the penetrating coil. Let's see how, how those go. Okay, it's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, looks like no troubles. Uh, the third nut from the exhaust let's remove the heat shield and I believe there should be the bearing holding the drive shaft in place See if it's enough. All right, and we have the bearing for the drive shaft here. Looks like it's what is it, like 13? Is it? Yeah, it's 13. Okay, let it hang slightly and meanwhile I'll try to get access to all of those six screws holding the drive shaft in place without rotating the drive shaft. We'll see because I'm too lazy to lower the car turn it on engage the neutral let's see if if the super long extension will do us ah interesting so somehow despite the car is in park the transmission still spins. Hmm, interesting. Uh, 
<sighs> oh, they're they are pretty tight. Uh, okay, change of slide, change of plans. Let's see if this combination will do us any good. Deep, deep, deep. Huh. Pretty tight, I would say. Doesn't budge. Okay, I blocked wheels so they won't spin. And now, using the regular ratchet. I can undo those. Looks like they're sitting on like some kind of Loctite or so, or something like that because it doesn't go easy. Uh. Uh. Okay, the straight. I mean, the ratchet was out, and I. Swivel extension slightly better. And unfortunately, it's so freaking hot and humid today. It's not a good day to work in the garage. All right, number three. All right. Probably like one of the strongest lock ties. <sighs> okay. Громче, говорю, блядь, вентилятор. Легко. Да, сколько сейчас время? Now the interesting part, it's typically not so easy to disconnect the drive shaft from the uh, differential flange or you know whatever the thing is. I'll probably use some penetrating coil right in there, just you know, and let it soak for for you know a few minutes, and maybe later on after a couple laugh taps it's gonna free up while the flange on the other side is soaking this is the transmission side and we need to release this uh, clamp uh, in order to uh, push the or pull from in order to <laughs> move the shaft over the shaft coming out of the transmission it's like ridiculous design Mercedes simply got bolts on both sides no problem 
you undo you undo those and fairly easily remove the drive shaft. How do you decided that they need a clamp on this side? Let's see. Alright, clamp undone. So once once we're gonna free up the other side, the whole thing can slide out. Okay, let's check if we'll be able to slightly move. Anything? Maybe from this side as well. Anything happening? Not really. Over there. Do -do 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 -do. I don't know, but looks like it may be moving. <sighs> yep. Okay. It's freed up. And I'm gonna, I just undid the last bolt holding the bearing and somehow we need to lower it. Let me see if I can get you a better, better view of what's happening here. Ouch. There's a lot of grease on the other side of this drive shaft let's see if we can <clears throat> can we do anything The subframe is slightly on the way. <clears throat> or the fuel tank is slightly on the way. I really don't recall what I did last time to free up the drive shaft. like almost almost there maybe maybe just maybe we can yank it out from this side uh, it's like need like a couple more millimeters of space that's it Pry bar? What do you think? Let's see if the pry bar may help us. And I don't really like the idea of prying through the 
gas tank. I'm really confused how they managed to design that thing without the easy you know, removal or whatever Oops. the other side okay yay Right, and I'm probably gonna need like a ziplock or something to put on the end of the drive shaft because the grease is coming out from it. All right, I'm gonna put a ziplock over the drive shaft, zip tie the ziplock. All right, and now, if I'm not mistaken, we simply need to pull the drive shaft off the transmission i don't recall was it hard or it's kind of simply i am using a pick to remove the adhesion between the rubber boot if you will it's pretty tight and I don't want to rip the boot so I'm trying to do I mean, I'm trying to be uh, as careful as possible There we go. Drive shaft removed. So yeah, it's about time when I was pulling the Mercedes engine out from the car already and we are only did exhaust and drive shaft. That's it. This is ridiculous. <laughs> While we are still in the bottom of the car, I think we can do two things now. The first is to release the cable from the uh, shift lever that goes to the transmission. And in order to do that, I think we're going to lower the transmission. Okay, now let's see how far the transmission gonna go. It's gonna pivot on the engine uh, engine mounts. Let's see if it's See the cable okay it's pretty much is bottomed out 
uh, so I slightly gonna support it and uh, let me reposition you all right guys you are on the top of the transmission and I am somewhere here in the bottom and I'm using this long screwdriver let me check if I'll be able to pull this pin holding the transmission cable Actually, okay this pin is released and now I need to try to remember how to disengage oh, uh, casualty I don't recall how to do that but okay so this goes to the side somehow How did I do it last time? Do I need to twist it somehow? Maybe you guys can see better from your angle, but I, I cannot. Huh. How to release it? Okay, there probably is a bolt joint right here holding it attached to the transmission let me see if I can find a little pry bar guys cannot see what am I doing Okay, I pried this ball joint and now, okay, and now the cable is released, okay, we can get to the next step. So meanwhile I'll put the transmission mounting back in place. One, two, three, four. Now I can remove the support. Okay, now this is the front of the transmission and I am removing this Power to expose those I guess there are six bolts attaching the flex plate to the transmission and we're gonna do every single one of them and for that I'm gonna need a uh, pry bar to rotate the crank so we can align the bolts right here where we need it 
in order to rotate the crank we are using this like a square thing too which goes inside the hole in the center somewhere there and then it grabs those bolts that are holding the pull in place by this kind of square thing so yeah that's the must have tool uh, for this kind of job otherwise you won't be able to uh, rotate the pulley okay those bolts are 16 millimeter 12 point so i'm holding the crank with my left hand and i'll see if i'll be able to hold on i need an extension all right let's do this one more time Sorry guys. Did we? Yep. It's loose. Gravity. Next bolt. find another one that's it right here Hmm. Interestingly enough, there is no any, you know, tread locker or Loctite or whatever. So they're clean. Okay, three done, three more to go. Halfway there. Okay. Looking for the next one. Here we 
go. Yeah, the long range would be preferable, but I don't have one. Okay, looks like how many? Last one? Oh no. Yeah, should be the last one. gonna be challenging later on to torque them to spec because I don't see any way that the torque range and a socket would fit in there oh, this one is tight wow Alright, the transmission internally is detached from the engine and I just remembered what we can do here once the car is up. We can disconnect the steering and you know the steering shaft from the steering rack. Okay, let's try to undo it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need any extensions or not. It goes fine. if it's gonna come out easy or not ah oh, yeah very easy I'm gonna telescope it back to the steering column and and what and that's it and also I would like to disconnect this connector going to the steering rack because when we're gonna lower the subframe those wires are going you know to the chassis and I don't want them to be yanked out so yeah this is the connector to disconnect do, 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 do. All right. 
press. Okay, and this is gonna stay with the car. We don't need it right now. I also gonna remove those two brackets that supports the the radiator support. <laughs> The nut is pinched, so it doesn't spin freely, and there is no space for power tools. All right. One is out. Let's do a second one. This is my contraption for the. <laughs> For the transmission uh, line, because I think the cool transmission cooler was broken on this car, I simply route it just like that, so I could move the vehicle here and pull it inside the garage without, without, you know, pushing. This is the ground wires, possibly for the engine, I am not sure, so we need to remove those, because they connect the subframe and the frame rail, and we need to separate them, and I bet there is a positive cable going up top. But we're gonna disconnect it once the car gonna be on the ground. On the driver's side, we need to disconnect this connector. So looks like it's some kind of pump, auxiliary pump, and I'm, I'm gonna need to find the pick to disconnect it. Should I? No, I'm good. And it's gonna stay with the subframe. Okay, okay, let me put it somewhere here. And also, I'm gonna need to disconnect the AC lines, but I need to double check if there is any charge in the system. If yes, I'm gonna uh, recover the gas into my uh, gas tank. On this side, on the passenger side, uh, we're gonna have this fat wiring. It's gonna be uh, removed along with the subframe and looks like it's going to the fence. Uh, there are two connectors. One and two so those two connectors i'm gonna remove i'm gonna disconnect the coolant hose it's a lower coolant hose on this side and 
and then I'll see what else what else is on the way. Let's undo those connectors. At least let's let's attempt to. Okay, there is the security pin. I do not see where I need to push. Let me check if I can unclip it from the other side. Okay, good. One is done. One is more to go. And I'll try to use the same trick. Okay, unclipped it. And those connectors are attached here to the little frame or at least one of them okay. connectors are out out of the way and now I don't think there is any coolant in the system Okay, there is still something. Let me find container. Okay, container found. Okay. I don't think there should be much of coolant. Yeah, that's it. So only a few drops of coolant. Okay, this pipe will go down as well along with the subframe and the motor and uh, I need to undo this harness somehow okay harness freed up okay good this stays with the car this goes down this goes down now I'm probably gonna lower the car and I'm gonna follow those wires and for that I will also disconnect the battery because it's still connected which is not good and we'll proceed further but yeah we are getting closer so the car is down on the ground this is the wiring that we need to kind of unclip from the body and it's gonna uh, get removed along with the subframe so there is one clip in here and there is okay this one is broken clip one clip here and there is like a pass through probably we're gonna need to remove this rubber piece Okay, so this is the pass-through, probably there is some kind of clips somewhere, maybe not, ah, there is a clip holding the wires in here, we're gonna need to undo that, and then we're gonna undo this little distribution box, and I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's gonna go along with these wires, and will be dropped with the subframe. On the other side, there is the engine wiring going inside the uh, ECU somewhere there. So I need to refresh my mind how to get to there. We will un uh, disconnect those wires and those wires gonna come down with the engine as well. I also forgot about the vacuum line that goes to the brake booster and this is line and it <coughs> disconnects from this side so um, let me check if all right 
Now this vacuum line is disconnected. It will remain with the engine. Uh, okay, the fuel line. I, I will leave it probably till the last point, and I will disconnect it. Where I will disconnect it? Maybe somewhere here, actually. Looks like the, it is the connection in here. And we'll need to remove this plate, the metal plate. I guess it's one, two, three bolts. Maybe there is anything else I don't recall. But we'll, we'll check it out as it goes. I already disconnected the battery. And this is 10. Conveniently, the nut stays with the wiring and this is 10 and the big one is 13 and the nut doesn't stay with that wire so I'm gonna put the nut back in here let me check. Looks like there is the cap. Is it? Ah. I lost the cap somewhere. Hopefully I'll find it later. But the cap was hiding 10 millimeter nut. Or actually looks like it's not a nut, but it is a bolt. Put the bolt back in place in here. And it looks like we have one cable that goes into the socket. Right here in the back. remove it okay brutal brute force all right so this is how this little distribution box looks like and and then that ah, I found the rubber or plastic plug that I that was put on this bolt okay we're good here now we need to now we need to figure out how to how to unclick. Come on, it shouldn't be that hard. Okay, there is the clip in the in a wheel well. Let me try to clip it okay. there's something else other two clips yeah there are two okay two clips We are almost there with this wiring harness, almost there. Everything is a pry bar. Okay, this wiring is almost ready. Okay, now it's now it's detached from the car so what we need we need to remove this cover and we also need to remove this cover to release the 
wiring. Are there any more clips? Don't see any more clips. find anything else holding but let's continue with the removal of this thing and we'll see maybe we'll okay, how we're doing much better now what else is holding us. Something is holding us. Anything? I see coolant. The wires coming from the engine compartment inside through this thing so i think i need to undo those first before we can go any further pry bar Connected. One more to go. Not so much space to operate here. Okay. Retainer. Bar. Okay, second is removed. looks like I still need to undo those uh, hoses I probably said it a thousand times but Mercedes is so much easier clamps are pretty tight okay, let's give a chance to special clamp removal tool They never work for me but this time it worked out second try one two three come on come on yep strange but yeah they worked out fine this time now I need to pull the hoses all right 
pose the removal tool. Let's try to. Alright. First one out. Second one is tight. All right, bolts are removed. What's holding us? Almost free, at least from this side. Ah, okay, so there is the metal metal bar behind. Let's undo the metal metal bar then. Thirteen millimeters. One. metal bar and while we are here we can remove this windshield washer thing it's this is not the main tank it's just where you pour it and then it goes behind the fender and I'm gonna put those nuts back in place so I knew where to find them when the time comes. Okay, how are you doing now? What's holding you now? Okay, so there are two, two indentations and two tabs on the sides what prevented us to remove that freaking thing. Okay, how about now? What's holding us? See one clamp down there. I just need to confirm. Yeah, it looks like this is the clamp that's holding us. Or one of the clamps. Okay. Clamp has been removed. Remove the wiring bracket. The wiring bracket removed. Are we free? Or almost free? Or totally free? Yes. So <laughs> the 
the clamp the clamp was here now we have the access to the harness I'm gonna need to open this cover and if I'm mistaken I'll find the engine computer module under this cover and I'm gonna unhook the wiring from it or maybe remove the wiring along with the engine computer and it's like a T30 screws uh, let me vacuum it first okay let's check what's inside I guess it's T30 <coughs> See if three bolts are enough. Yep. So three bolts, and looks like we do not need to remove the computer, but just the harness. Oof. Out. Okay, two of them are out and see that uh, this ground wire needs to be uh, removed as well okay this comes out from this and let's put the nut back in place okay how does it look now all right we still need to remove looks like hmm. what like the whole thing because like there is a fat chunk of wires in the same loom to do then we need to remove it let's check I see the clip on this side is there another one okay and the engine computer is on the way okay, engine computer is out how does it look like now couple connectors one and two I'm gonna stay inside another positive wire hopefully the nut is yeah, the nut is not removable, so it it won't uh, get lost. One more clip. Oh, all right, and that's how you remove the freaking wiring loom here. Wow, that's pretty brutal. I would say uh, we still we still have a zip tie holding those two in place. I'm gonna cut a zip tie and remove those. Wow! Okay, put 
the ECU back for now and put the cover back for now three screws let them be in here all right i'm gonna cut a zip tie and the wiring loom is is done and there is the zip tie all right guys we're getting really really close i need to undo those two um, clamps one and one below that and those are the lines going to the supercharger and uh, on the other uh, i won't show it to you because there is no space for me to put a camera uh, right there i can barely fit my hand in there on the other side i'm gonna need to undo uh, this clamp so i'm i guess there is a thermostat right there and so that's the pipe from the thermostat and uh, ac compressor as well so it's it's fairly accessible fairly big hole from here so i'm gonna undo those uh connections too i double check there is no gas in the system probably <laughs> i know why probably because of that but other than that two clamps here one clamp there two connections from the ac compressor it's it's you know pretty cramped space i won't be able to show you on camera but it's 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 fairly fairly good i am undone two hoses in the bottom one hose on the passenger side what that i showed you previously and right now i think we can undo this coolant hose i will see if it's gonna crack or not because those things pretty brittle being that old sits pretty tight try to break the adhesion hmm it's pretty tight i would say hmm right this is undone uh, compressor AC compressor uh, connection this looks like it's like a T40 Torx probably I think so and again it's slightly bored in and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see anything but I'll try to make it happen let's turn out to be T45 if I can undo it by hand or not no not really hmm. right, let's let me undo the second one and see can I untwist them? Okay, maybe I can simply grab the socket with my hand. And you probably cannot see anything. Me too, but I can feel it. And you cannot. The first bolt is out. Let's 
not so easy to reach with the bare hands to the second one folks i'm gonna put the camera down